She is one of three children born to Elrond Half-Elven and his wife Celebrion. In the end, she must choose between living all the days of the world with her family or being separated from them to live a mortal life with the man she loves. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the life and death of Arwen Undomiel. Arwen is born in 241 of the Third Age, the third child of Elrond and Celebrion. For over 2,000 years, Arwen would live with her mother, father, and two older brothers in the realm of Rivendell. Notably, Arwen would live through the time of the Angmar War, the centuries-long conflict where the Witch King would not only fight the remnants of Arnor, but would also lay siege to Imladris for a time. In 2509, their family unit would be broken by tragedy. For in that year, Arwen's mother Celebrion is returning from a trip to Lorien, where she was visiting her parents Galadriel and Celeborn. Crossing the Redhorn Pass, she is waylaid by orcs. She is captured, tormented, and receives a poisoned wound. Arwen's brothers Eladan and Elrohir would rescue her. And while Elrond's abilities as a healer would cure her body, she could not recover in mind or spirit. The following year, she bids farewell to her husband and children, sailing into the West, the only place where she could truly be healed. Despite what befell her mother, Arwen would, from time to time, live in Lothlorien with her grandparents. It is during one of these times that her father would take into his care one of a long line of the heirs of Isildur, Aragorn, son of Arathorn. It is in 2952, when Aragorn is just 21 years old, that Arwen returns to Rivendell, and they meet for the first time. Aragorn, who had just learned of his true heritage from Elrond, is humbled by Arwen's incredible beauty. His high lineage seeming to be of little worth compared to the dignity and loveliness of the Lady Arwen. He mistakes her for Luthien, known to have been the most beautiful of all the children of Iluvatar. Aragorn would leave with Elidan and Elrohir, going on adventures with the twins. His further solo journeys would take him to Rohan and Gondor, before he comes to Lorien to rest in 2980. There, the now 49-year-old Aragorn once again meets Arwen, who is once again visiting her grandparents. There, Arwen returns Aragorn's love, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Aragorn gives Arwen the Ring of Barahir, an heirloom of his line that once belonged to Baron himself. As the years pass and the Misty Mountains become more dangerous, Elrond requests his daughter to return to Imladris. Arwen journeys back to her father's house in 3009 of the Third Age. Arwen would be reunited there with her beloved when he brings four hobbits to Rivendell in October 3018. After Frodo awakes, he attends a feast where he sees Arwen for the first time, and we are given a description of Elrond's daughter. There sat a lady fair to look upon, and so like was she in form of womanhood to Elrond that Frodo guessed that she was one of his close kindred. Young she was, and yet not so. The braids of her dark hair were touched by no frost. Her white arms and clear face were flawless and smooth, and the light of the stars was in her bright eyes. Gray as a cloudless night, yet queenly she looked, and thought and knowledge were in her glance, as of one that has known many things that the years bring. Above her brow, her head was covered with a cap of silver lace netted with small gems, glittering white. But her soft gray raiment had no ornament save a girdle of leaves wrought in silver. That winter, when Aragorn leads the Fellowship to Lothlorien, Galadriel presents him with a gift from Arwen, the Elf Stone. This gem, also known as the Elisar, is an heirloom with two different possible origins. In both tales, however, it came into the hands of Galadriel, who gave it to her daughter Celebrion, who gave it to her daughter Arwen. Galadriel gives him the elf stone as a wedding gift from the family of the bride to the groom, for the only way for their wedding to come to pass would be the defeat of Sauron and Aragorn's ascent to the throne of Gondor and Arnor. 
Aragorn would wear the Elisar forever after, and one day would even bear its name. This, however, is not the only gift Arwen would send as encouragement to Aragorn. She would also weave for him a banner of black cloth decorated with mithril, gems, and gold. She sends it with Elidan and Elrohir as they ride with a group of rangers to seek out Aragorn and Rohan. Presented with the standard by the Grey Company, Aragorn is encouraged to take the paths of the dead. After the dead men of Dunharrow help him to victory at Palargir, Aragorn and his company sail to Gondor, and arriving at the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, Arwen's standard of Elendil is unfurled, triumphantly announcing the return of the king. In the aftermath of Sauron's defeat, Aragorn is crowned King Elisar on May 1st, 3019. And on that very day, Arwen leaves Rivendell with her father. On May 20th, they arrive in Lothlorien, where they rest for a week and are joined by Galadriel and Celeborn. On June 14th, Elidan and Elrohir meet their sister and accompany her to Edoras, where they would rest for two days, before continuing on to their destination of Minas Tirith. In the White City, Arwen marries Aragorn on Midsummer's Day, becoming the third union of elves and men. Choosing the path of a mortal life, she gives Frodo her place on the White Ship, so that the Ringbearer may sail into the Undying Lands. She had foreseen that Frodo's burden would not be lifted while he still dwelt in Middle-earth. She also gives him a necklace with a white gem. Arwen would bid farewell to her family as she chooses to remain in Middle-earth. In the text we are told, and Arwen Evenstar remained also, and she said farewell to her brethren. None saw her last meeting with Elrond her father, for they went up into the hills and there spoke long together, and bitter was their parting that should endure beyond the ends of the world. Arwen would serve as Queen of Gondor for many long years. She and Aragorn would have a son named Eldarion, and two daughters for whom we are not given names. We are told she and her husband visit Sam, Merry, and Pippin outside the Shire in the year 15 of the Fourth Age and at that time she makes Sam's daughter Eleanor her maid of honor. Sadly, as is the nature of the doom of man which she had chosen, Arwen would experience the death of her beloved Aragorn. He would pass on March 1st in the year 120 of the Fourth Age, at the exact age of 210. In their last conversation, among the most heart-wrenching of Tolkien's writings, they speak of Aragorn's upcoming passing, and of their fate and of the bitterness of mortality, and of hope beyond despair, and of Arwen's newfound outlook on the men of Numenor. But I say to you, King of the Numenorians, not till now have I understood the tale of your people and their fall. As wicked fools I scorn them, but I pity them at last. For if this is indeed, as the Eldar say, the gift of the one to men, it is bitter to receive. So it seems, he said. But let us not be overthrown at the final test, who of old renounced the shadow and the ring. In sorrow we must go, but not in despair. Behold, we are not bound forever to the circles of the world, and beyond them there is more than memory. Farewell. Estelle, Estelle, she cried, and with that, even as he took her hand and kissed it, he fell into sleep. Then a great beauty was revealed in him, so that all who after came there looked on him in wonder, for they saw that the grace of his youth and the valor of his manhood and the wisdom and majesty of his age were blended together. And long there he lay, an image of the splendor of the kings of men, in glory undimmed before the breaking of the world. But Arwen went forth from the house, and the light of her eyes was quenched, and it seemed to her people that she had become cold and gray as nightfall in winter that comes without a star. Then she said farewell to Eldarion, and to her daughters, and to all whom she had loved. And she went out from the city of Minas Tirith, and passed away to the land of Lorien, and dwelt there alone under the fading trees until winter came. Galadriel had passed away, and Celeborn also was gone, and the land was silent. Arwen would stay for a time in Lorien, and finally, laying down on the hill of Keren Emroth, the very hill where she was betrothed to Aragorn, the Lady Arwen gives up her mortal life, 
and there, until the world is changed, lies her green grave. As mortal beings, the souls of Aragorn and Arwen are not bound to the earth, but go beyond the circles of the world, going on to a destination known only to the One. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Listen Me the Cinda, Kella Brimbor, The Mighty Mim, Team Weasel, Rabbi Rob Thomas, Charles Leisure, Toby Mobs Music, CCDC Red Team, Nerd Sigman Anytimer, Pelkey Sports Cards, Mookie the Brown, Christopher Carbaugh, Joe Tepper, Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Salim Rahman, Zetrock, Berto Berg, Grand Strategy Nerd, Graham Derricott, The Dark Haired One, Wyland, Michael Wu, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.